Hi, welcome to um, our new home baking series. I'm Stacy. I'm the teen librarian. I'm happy to bring these um, baking videos back. Um, some of my first videos from today didn't save. So all you need to know is we're doing Paul Hollywood's cob loaf today. Um, if you have a kitchen scale, that's great. Um, the British use weights and measurements and it's a little bit more accurate, so it's actually better. But I've done my best to convert some of the measurements. If you just have measuring cups, it's okay, we'll try it. Um, also, the recipe requires bread flour. You can use all purpose. I'm not sure how well it'll work, but it should be able to be substituted. It should be no problem. So basically, you weigh out all your, in your uh, ingredients, you put them together in the bowl, make sure that the yeast and the salt don't mix, um, and stir them all together and then um, <clears throat> um, start adding the water and that's where the videos will pick up so just a little bit of trial and error as we start okay. with this. so I've added a little bit more water add it a little bit at a time now the nice thing about the water at least is if you have a nice measuring cup it should have milliliters on the side anyway so I didn't convert that you should be fine going pretty well. Now, just going by my gut, I think I might need just a little bit more water. We want it to be more cohesive than what it's looking like for me right now. There's still a lot of uh, flour inside the bowl, loose flour. So I'm gonna just get some more water. Okay, so the important thing at this point is to not add too much water. So I'm just gonna add it a little bit at a time. Just a teensy bit more. Just a drop. You really kind of have to feel it and make sure that your dough is cohesive, kind of soft. This is starting to feel perfect. Okay. Okay. So we're going to use just a little oil to grease our work surface. I'm using a cutting board. Uh, flour will kind of, we don't want to add too much flour to the dough, so we're just going to add a little bit of tea oil. What I'm going to do is just sort of like get it all over my cutting board. Just sort of get some on my hands too so it's not as sticky on my hands. Consistent, fold the far edge of the dough into the middle, and turn the dough by a quarter turn and repeat. You want the dough to be very lightly coated in olive oil. Alright, so 
So this, now we're gonna get into the kneading, so I'm glad that you can really like see what I'm doing. We're gonna push the dough out with, in one direction with the heel of my hand, fold it back in on myself, turn the dough a quarter, turn, do it again. Just gonna keep doing that for a little while. Stretches the gluten. If you know anything about making bread, you know how important making gluten is. <laughs> All right, so it says do this for about four to five minutes until the dough is stretchy. So obviously I won't subject you to all of the kneading, but. Maybe I can do it faster when I get all of this. Now maybe I just didn't need it long enough last time because my dough was much stickier and much harder to work with. So I think my dough is looking right here today. And after this is the best, which is really nice because you can go and do all the dishes. You can go read a book, you can go watch TV show. You can go do whatever you need to do. All the dough rests. And you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so we're going to have to run the dishwasher. Now let's see. Honestly, I'm thinking that's pretty good. I'm gonna just wash my hands because they're pretty sticky. Now I'm going to use a new mixing bowl for the rise. Alright, so what you want is to lightly oil uh, your mixing bowl. Again, I'm going to spread it around with my pastry brush. I might pour out some of the extra because I gave a generous pour of oil. coated in olive oil. What you're going to do is take a clean tea towel, uh, moisten it, wring it out so it's just damp, not wet, and cover it. Now the recipe will call for an hour of proving time. I would say 90 minutes is a good start. So I'm going to leave my dough to rest and I will be back in about 90 minutes. Okay, so I've given my dough 90 minutes to rise and this looks very different from what I put in so I'm very happy with it. I'm going to scrape it already onto the tray so I'm not futzing around with too many things. So we're going to scrape it into the tray here, gorgeous.
and just knock it back a little bit. Don't mind me, I just dropped some of the measuring cups on my floor. So, it's a mess, that's fine. I'm just gonna knock it around a little bit and help spill the gluten. And it's a little bit messy because I'm doing it on the parchment paper, but the uh, cutting board is already in the sink, so. All right. Now we're going to try and shape it into the loaf shape. This is a little bit finicky, but fine. Just uh, try and get it round and high. So this is what it looks like, and I am going to put the same tea towel back on it and let it proof for an hour. Okay? All right. So I'll be back in an hour, and we'll see how the um, <laughs> we'll see how the bread turns out. All right. So I'm gonna try to speak up because I made the dumb mistake of running the dishwasher right now. But I've already preheated my oven. It's 425 degrees Fahrenheit. I put an old roasting tin on the bottom of the oven. That's very important. We're gonna pour um, cold water in there. It'll help create a nice uh, crust on the bread. So the steam rises up and it helps um, make that crust. So here is my loaf. It could be a little rounder, it could be a little higher, you know? Like, they don't always turn out perfect. But I'm gonna try and reshape it again into a bit more of a loaf shape. And I think that'll be nice. It'll bake up nicely either way. I did this once before and it looked much worse and it still came out and tasted fine, so. Now, so what we're going to do is we're going to create a diamond pattern with a knife. Shallow cuts. Don't want to deflate the dough or anything. Okay. Okay, so it's time to put the bread in the oven. Isn't that exciting? All right. So, put it on the middle tray not get burned on camera because that pan is going to be hot. All right, so I'm going to carefully pour some cold water in there so it's already steaming. Okay, push that shut, set a timer for 30 minutes, and let's see how our bread does. All right, so my timer just went off, so we're going to take the uh, bread out. That looks great. It could really, um, mine's a little light. You could even like cook it a little longer if you wanted a little darker. But um, for me, that looks great. I'm gonna move this over so you can see. That's perfect. All right, so that is how you make uh, Paul Hollywood's cob loaf. All right, so that's how you make Paul Hollywood's cob loaf. I will see you next time. We will make another loaf of bread, and um, I hope you're enjoying this. Remember to tune in to the Cranford Library's website for all the information on our upcoming programs. Uh, there's going to be lots more baking programs. We have some special stuff coming up for Maker's Day, so keep your eyes out for that. Um, and all, as always, we'll have, you know, grab and go kits because we're trying to be COVID cautious. So, um, make sure to keep an eye on the website for all the, um, grab and go kit details that you might need.